Hi guys, it's Daniela again and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. So for today's video, I thought I would talk to you about a few products that disappointed me, that just didn't work for me from Revolution. So all of these products are kind of newish to me. Like I had them, I would say like 2020, 2019 maybe. Obviously everyone has different skin, different preference in makeup. So these are all my opinions. These are products that didn't get on with my skin or that I didn't like for whatever reason. And obviously I haven't tried everything from Revolution. So I don't know if this is the worst products they have in their range, but these are the worst products that I've personally tried from Revolution. So yeah guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe and let's get started. Alright guys, so first things first, I'll eat your brain. Okay, um, the first product that honestly came to mind when I was thinking about this video is this one here. So this is by Revolution, obviously. This is the Revolution Fast Brow pen pomade this was a hot mess so when i first got it i clicked it and no product came out and then i kept clicking it thinking oh it's probably just a little bit faulty then all of a sudden pff, a volcano of product it's just so messy you end up wasting so much product because the clicky component thing it's not so much that it's a bad formula i do think it's a little bit intense it's too pigmented obviously i know it's a brow pomade but i just don't think a brow pomade in a pen like this is very just useful because it does create very blocky kind of thick brows and to be honest the shape of this it doesn't really make sense unless you are literally just doing this i don't really see how you can do the front of your brows with such a shape like this just because there's so much build up product in there you'd have to clean it every time you used it to like get kind of fine hair looks if that makes sense i just think it gets it's too messy it's too much work for a product that i just feel like is just not good for me and my brows to be honest i think even if you put this formula in a brow gel i still think it'd be too pigmented and too messy so i feel like the formula needs to be thinned out a little bit just less opaque and then maybe that could work in a brow gel but definitely not this pigmented formula in a brow gel because i have a similar product that i'm going to talk about that's like a brow gel but it honestly is so pigmented it's like a pomade in a brow gel and it just doesn't work for me personally it's not a product that's actually like horrible like throw it in the bin straight away it just takes some practice it just takes maybe skill that i don't have patience maybe that i don't have and it's just yeah it's just not my kind of product so it's not the worst but i don't recommend it personally so the next product is the revolution brow soap gel so it looks like this this looks disgusting it generally looks disgusting even the brush does i completely forgot to mention that the brush is useless i just can't get on board with this this doesn't stick my brows down like i want them to be down like it's not a very strong hold soap. And for me, if I'm gonna take the time out to do like a clear brow, clear soap situation, like gel situation, I'm just gonna go in with my Benefit one because one, it's just quicker and easier. Two, it actually keeps my brows in place, unlike this. For me, it's just a waste of time. It's a waste of a step when I could just use one brow gel that I know for a fact is gonna keep my brows in place and gonna make them look fluffy instead of doing all this. So for me, I really can't think of a situation where I would rather use this one over my benefit one so for me it's a no and I wouldn't recommend it however if you want like a brow soap gel get this one because it's so much more affordable than like the Patrick Tar one and the other ones or just buy a bar of soap maybe that will do the job better than this but yeah for me it's a no it just didn't work for me so my last brow product is this one here this is the revolution obviously a uh, brow gel I think it's called in dark brown it's just too pigmented this is very similar to this one in the sense of it literally feels like this formula is in here in a sense except this one's a little bit thinner the formula is very thin so it can get really messy quite quickly if you're not concentrating and that's one of the reasons why i didn't like this at all it's because it is a, such a deep color for my brows and it is very pigmented and the formula is very thin you do have to be concentrating on your brows like you can't just kind of do a on your brows because you will come out with very intense looking brows or it everywhere around your brows i actually think that this product would work really well on people that have very light hair or uh, very sparse hair just because this will like comb through every hair that you have 
because it is so thin and pigmented. So yeah, for me it's a no, but I don't think it would be a no for everyone. So next I'm gonna be talking about the Revolution Conceal and Fix Light Beige Ultimate Coverage Concealer with Salicystic Acid, I'm guessing. It's just too thick for me. It's too cakey looking. It's too dry looking under my under eye. It's hard to blend out because it's such a dense form. Like obviously this is like a cream pot concealer. They are usually a little bit thicker and even if it wasn't for how dense and thick it was, it was just super drying. It looked really cakey under my under eye. I can imagine it working for other people that maybe like this kind of formula and like the kind of texture of this concealer. It just wasn't for me. It just didn't work for me. Last product is this one here. So this is the CC Perfecting Foundation Moisture Rich SPF 30. This is by Revolution Pro. I don't understand this. One, I feel like this was pumped with a lot of air instead of product because even in my first time trying it on camera with you guys, you can see how much air was pumped out just by me trying to get the foundation out. It's meant to be a CC cream. It's way too thick for a CC cream. It's not lightweight at all. You can feel it on your skin. This is probably one of the thickest looking foundations I've ever tried. It did not look skin like at all for a CC cream. I don't understand it. It highlighted all the worst like fine line textures I have around my mouth. It actually was really sticky and really like dense feeling on the skin. But like the stickiness I'd never felt before. And honestly, I felt it the whole time on my skin. Another thing as well, I found it really hard to blend products over this. I've never tried a foundation with such a sticky, dense feeling before on my skin ever before. Next product is one that it's not the worst I've ever tried, but it is the worst from Revolution. So this is the I Love Revolution Nudes Mini Eyeshadow Palette. I've tried... I don't know how many eyeshadow palettes I've tried from Revolution. I've tried a few and all of them have worked really well. This one has worked well. I created a nice look out of it. But this is harder to blend than any of the other Revolution um, eyeshadows. I don't know if it's a different formula because it's under a different sister brand. This just isn't the best. And I highly, highly recommend other ones over this one. It's not terrible. Will I still be able to use it? Yes. Will I still use it? Probably not because I have such similar shades to this in other palettes that are mini also like the elf bite size ones that just perform better than this and just work easier than this it's not the worst palette if you have this and you make it work yeah you can make it work i definitely did make it work and i have made it work because i've worn this quite a few times it's just not one that i would recommend out of all the revolution eyeshadow palettes that i've tried personally so my last product is one that kind of is my fault and it's just not a good product for my skin type. If you have oily skin, stay away from this. If you have dry skin, you might love this. So this is the Glass Skin Primer. So this is meant to be a dewy finish kind of primer. I bought this thinking it was a serum, not an oil. And then when I first tried it on video, I actually put it on my hand. I was like, oh no, this is an oil. I'm not putting it on in this video because I didn't want to muck up the rest of the video because of the primer. This is an oil primer this is not for me this reminds me a lot of the hourglass number no. seven primer i feel like from what i remember they work exactly the same way on my skin they just don't work on my skin if you have dry skin i think you'll love this it's very oily i wore it and my my makeup was off within a couple hours because i have oily skin this is an oil based primer it really did just separate my makeup it just didn't work for my skin it doesn't sink in like fast absorbing oils will it does sit on your skin but it does leave your skin feeling really moisturized and i feel like this would look really nice over dry patches if you have dry to combination i still wouldn't recommend it if you have any oil on your skin i would not recommend this so yeah guys that was the last product that i tried from revolution that just didn't work for me obviously i've said before these products just didn't work for me personally they might work for other people so that's why I want to make sure that when I'm talking about products that I don't like, I mention, okay, so it didn't work for me for this and this reason, but it might work for you if you have this and this, or if you like this and this, if that makes sense. So yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you like this video, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.